The Colorado Avalanche have a commanding 3-0 lead over the Edmonton Oilers in the Western Conference Final. Chris Maselli of Locked On Avalanche joins us to discuss the secret to his team's success. All that and more coming up on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin, glad to be with you on this Monday. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. My pleasure to welcome back to the show a very familiar face uh, to Locked On NHL viewers and a familiar voice to Locked On NHL listeners, the host of Locked On Avalanche, Chris Maselli. Chris, how you yeah. doing? Uh, good, man. I always love uh, showing up online. It's like my second home. Locked yes. On NHL. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Welcome home. And uh, <laughs> nice uh, situation your team finds itself in up three games to none. Uh, although I will say game three was a little tougher uh, of a win than the first two games. Uh, what was tougher about game three? Let's start with that. Well, anytime you're on the road, I mean, right there is, is going to be a tough atmosphere. And Edmonton is definitely a, a difficult place to play. That place is loud. Uh, but the abs this year, the the road is is just not bothering them, especially in the playoffs. They have two losses so far in, in these entire playoffs, and they're both at home. They have not lost on the road yet. So, But for this game, it was just, you know, Edmonton needed to come out, and, and they needed a win. And sometimes when you get that, you get a team that is – uh, putting some things together that will, uh, you know, put them in a better position to to try and win. And they did. I mean, first shift of the game for Connor McDavid, and he, he gets a goal. It couldn't have started off any better for Edmonton, and it couldn't have started off any worse for Colorado. But Colorado has done this so many times in the playoffs where they give up the first goal. And it's – I joked on, on Lockdown Avalanche, like – they're like Wade Boggs. Like they'll give you the first strike and then they they just have so much time to get their legs under them, get going and play their game. It They're just in so much command of themselves right now. They don't panic. Um, and, you know, you get things like, and I'm sure we'll get to it, the Nazem Kadri and, and Evander Kane thing. Like that sure. happened minutes after the McDavid goal. So Edmonton went from, as great a start as you you can to a five minute major, and it didn't matter. I mean, it didn't matter, but you know what I mean. It doesn't matter that that the Avalanche didn't score on those five minutes. It was just it sucked the life out of that building. So, and on top of that, the Avs just. I, I think after game one, everybody was just thinking this that was going to be just a microcosm of the series to come with goals left and right. And I don't think we gave enough credit to the Colorado Avalanche and their defense and those defensive pairings that they have. They are making life very, very difficult for Edmonton. They're not giving them good looks. They're keeping them outside of the dots. You know, they're, they're going to get, you can't completely shut out Connor McDavid and dry side. It seems like he's hurt, Yeah, but uh, you're getting really good defense and backup goaltender. Pablo Francois is looking like Vasilevsky. <laughs> he, I mean, he, he's he's come in, but for Avalanche fans, we're kind of used to that from him because he's been reliable for quite a while now. How easy would it have been for him? You know, you, you, you come into the series, you're starting the game and bam, you know, less than a minute in, you're down one nothing on the road, places going bonkers. And yet he wasn't intimidated. No. And I think that just speaks to like he's been called on so many times because Avalanche fans know uh, they they have dealt with injuries for years now. And and even in, you know, before uh, this past year with Philip Grubauer, the past couple of years, Philip Grubauer, like he went down. Pablo Francois stepped in 
And this was a couple years ago when they, they had the outdoor game at, at Air Force. Phil Grubauer got injured at that game. And Francois had to come in the first week. He was the number one star in, in the league. The second week, he was the number three star in the league. And if COVID hadn't stopped that season, Pavel Francois was going into the playoffs as the number one goalie. So this is like they have a great one and and they're really like one and one a uh, a tandem. You need that in today's NHL is a goalie tandem. And, and they've signed him. Uh, he, he wasn't unrestricted, but they signed him for another couple. Like he is, they, 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 they don't miss a beat when he is in. And that goes, you know, not just for him, but for the avalanche and their lines. Like they, they're, they're missing guys like Burakovsky got hurt. So, and then Nicholas Abe Kubel came in, he got hurt. So then they bring in, you know, Nico Sturm. It's just like, you know, you always hear the next man up mentality and it, and it works to a T for the avalanche. It's great. Talk to me about some of these extracurriculars, the injuries, mm. the, the the physicality of this series, sometimes approaching or crossing the line. What's your take? Uh, as far as the, the Evander Kane thing, like that, that's just not necessary. It's just un, un, uncalled for. I mean, it, it was – he could see Kadri's numbers for a while, and he still decided to go through with that. Um, you know, the game – Game one really wasn't that physical. And and I think, you know, I don't know if Edmonton thought like we, we need to up our physicality. Uh, but I don't think it's been that bad outside of the Evander Kane hit. That one was completely egregious. And, and you know, the, the five minute major was the least of his worries. Now he's suspended a game. Uh, I kind of guessed that's that's what it would be. Not saying that I agree with that. Uh, you know, if, if we're going off of, you know, history and, you know, we went off of history when Nazem Kadri was suspended for eight games last year. Why are we not going off of history when it comes to Evander Kane and suspensions? And I'm kind of of the guy, like, I, I would like to figure out a way to suspend a guy, especially in the playoffs for when you do something like that. And the, the, the person that you injured is out for a significant amount of time. Why is that guy? Why is the guy that not performed the act out for a similar amount of time? Because if Edmonton wins this game in game four, Evander Kane is back. And we know Nazem Kadri is not going to be back for the rest of the series. Is that fair? Well, I don't know. I mean, it, I think it's a conversation. It's tough because then, then you have this indefinite suspension where a, a player could even intentionally stay out in order to keep another player out of a series. You could, but then, then you know, would the Avalanche want to do that with Nazem Kadri? Would, would the Avalanche want not to with Nazem Kadri, Kadri, but it depends who who the injured player is. If you make that the rule, is what it, I'm saying. You, right, and and I think there would be some, uh, you know, th there'd have to. I'm not saying it, it, this is like set in stone, and, and this is how I think it should be. Right, but when when this happens, it's just like oh, you get one game, and the other guy gets he's getting at least four. Mm -hmm. because of the injury. And I just don't think that like matches up. I don't know what the answer is. I'm just saying, right. I just feel like it's a little bit unfair, but um, it is what it is. I, 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 people are asking me like, what do you think he should have gotten for Evander Kane? Right. Um, you know, I, I think more than one, I would have been okay, okay. With, with, with two or three, but I think one is a little bit light and just well, because of, because of the, the act, it was, it was, I get it was the intentional. I get the feeling if it was regular season, we'd be looking at at least five. But the playoffs, they tend to try to shorten the suspensions. Tell that to Nazem Kadri. Uh, hey, <laughs> you're preaching to the choir on that. Yeah, yes, exactly. I, exactly. I understand. Yeah. What are the keys for the Avalanche to close out this series without too much drama? Yeah, uh, they, uh, you, you know, when, when you're when you're rolling like the Avs are, you don't change anything like you you just keep playing your game whatever Edmonton throws at you I feel like the avalanche can handle it and I've said this against when they first round against uh, Nashville you got everything that Nashville could could throw at you and you felt like okay that like we we can beat this team St. Louis was I think I St. Louis was tough you mm -hmm. know they, they're lucky to get out of that in in, in six games um, but same thing with, with Edmonton you know what I mean? You you are getting the best that they have and the depth for the Avalanche, Edmonton has no answer for them. The depth, the, the bottom six 
guys for forwards for the abs are just they're, they're putting up more points than the top six guys. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> um, or else it seems that way. I don't have that, uh, you know, those stats directly in front of me, but it just right. seems that way. They, they are, they, when, when the fourth line is out there, you're confident, you're confident they can do some stuff. So keep doing that. Keep playing great defense. You are getting every single game so far in the series. You've gotten at least 40 shots on goal. Continue to do that. Continue to play great defense. They're playing very good defense mm-hmm. on Connor McDavid. I think Leon Dreisaitl is a little bit hurt. Um, and he doesn't, he just does not seem to have the step that he normally has or the strength that he normally has. Um, so, I mean, everything is working in the avalanche advantage right now, despite them having injuries of their own, they just are, are a great cohesive unit and it doesn't matter who's out on that ice. Uh, they're going to play that way. So things are looking really good for the ass. All right, Chris, why don't you tell our listeners and our viewers where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Yeah, follow on uh, Twitter, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche. Um, and within our profile there, my Twitter page is on there and my co-host Kyle Sullivan, his Twitter handle is on there as well. Uh, we're on Instagram, Locked on Avalanche, and YouTube. Just search uh, Locked on Avalanche and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. All right. Chris Maselli, always a pleasure. Thanks for doing yes. it. Thanks, Gil. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts.